This is a HeadGum Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mitch. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Maid's bed sheets inspired by NASA. That's right, NASA wags. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So you get better sleep every night. That's one small nap for man, one giant sleep for mankind. Mitch, these sheets are infused with silver that prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them cleaner and fresher three times longer than other sheets. Ooh, no nasty. more gross odors. Yeah, get that, get those odors out of there. Get wives. them out of here. Stop sleeping on bacteria. That's what I say. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than bed sheets used by some five star hotels. So you're thinking, duh, what do I gotta do? Here's what you gotta do go to trymiracle.com slash doughboys to try miracle made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code DOUGHBOYS at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash doughboys and use the code doughboys to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash doughboys to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Hey, buddy, it's Weiger here with the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. What's up, everybody? I've joined Wags for the intro, so you know what that means. SAG's on strike too, Wags. That's right. SAG after the Actors Union has joined WGA, the Writers Union, on the mm. picket lines. Like the elves marching into Helm's Deep to form a unified front against the uh, world-threatening menace that is the AMPTP. So the elves are actors in this scenario? I think so. Okay. And hu and writers are humans? Yeah, because like you look at like the yeah. humans that are at Helm's Deep. That's those are more writer types. The actors are like these lithe, beautiful, you know, picturesque creatures. Me? Am I a dwarf that just kind of got mixed up in it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the dwarves, yeah, right? You're Gimli with reverse force perspective. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, a so basically what's happening is that, and you can find all this information online. This is all readily available, but. Uh, part of the strike guidelines are mm -hmm. involve, you know, promoting any sort of projects and and, you know, li having restrictions on that, um, making it so that we are not you know, you're not using social media and you're not using things like podcast appearances to try to promote upcoming or ongoing work. Yes. And uh, we're giving that context because this episode that we recorded was first I mean, was recorded back in June before we went on a recent tour. Yes, and it's also um, so it predates it's, all of these guidelines. It was a, a part originally part of a theme month, which we're no longer doing. Yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah, you know, a complicated time, Wags, as 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 an actor, and, right? And, and having a project that's coming out, and and so it's com it was complicated. We were excited to promote it, but this is the right thing to do. One hundred percent. We're, we're, we're uh, I, I am a proud union member, and. And we're gonna we're gonna play by the by the rules, and we're gonna enforce we're, we're not gonna enforce the rules, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do exactly what we need to do, and we're gonna be picking it every day. I'm gonna be spending more time with you, I guess. Um, <laughs> we're gonna have a great time. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I mean, when but, I say union, you say power. Union power. <laughs> <laughs> so it is very much like Nelson and and Martin <laughs> on the line together. <laughs> So, just to talk about this a little bit. Yes, I think there that like like SAG after has this this rule right now, the strike rule, where you're yep. not you know we're not promoting anything, mm -hmm. and you know that includes a list actors going on talk shows, yes. uh, to promote their big theatrical movies, but it also applies to to smaller things, and you know people using their own social media accounts and their own existing platforms. But I think that that speaks to something that has become an expectation of working actors, working writers, 100%. and working people in Hollywood in general, which is like. You have to use, there's an expectation that you are going to use your own platform that you created, that you curated to boost work that you were hired for. 
And so willingly the, and happily do that. I, yes, I think yeah. you're hundred yeah. percent. I mean, b- besides a, a million other issues, that besides is besides a another, million other yes. issues. That is one thing that has just like become another task that you that's uncompensated, and that's just mm-hmm. an expectation of you for working in an industry. Why is your hundred percent? Why yeah. you're a, I'm one hundred percent wags. <laughs> Hell yeah, I am. Wags, you're a hundred percent wags. <laughs> I, you're right. I mean, over the last look, we've been lucky to have. A podcast, and over the last, it saved our asses, 15, especially during the pandemic. Fifteen years. I'm a I'm an actor who works decently well. Yeah, I think that like you know some of my other actor friends would be like, you work, uh, you work, you work enough. You know, you work enough. You get. I, I've 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 strung some things together. I've never been able to make a li- a living off of off of what I've off of my acting. Work, yeah, ever, 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 ever. That's it's just I it just it, it never happened. There was maybe one season the third season of a show where i maybe made like a living wage but besides that it just is not the case i I would i would have to have other jobs and and in my life the other job i don't consider it a job because it's insulting to people who work jobs is (laughs) doughboys and we're lucky we're we are very lucky to have that very fortunate to have this podcast has has paid better than any work i've ever had in the industry and and so we're extremely lucky to have it but that doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean that these things should change for actually working class actors and, and people are just not making their fair share. It's insane. It, it's 100 percent true. And that, that's well said, Mitch. And I think that, you know, you, you, y'all you referring to, to SAG-AFTRA, but also the other entertainment unions sure. and all the unions have been standing yes. with WGA through the uh, 70 plus days as of this episode release. And I think it'll be it'll be 80 days of uh, of being on the picket lines. And uh, we're no, going we to stand, we're gonna stand with y'all because it's all like that's that's yeah. what this is right now is that we we have each other. We have that solidarity and the cross union solidarity from SAG-AFTRA has been wonderful. Uh, we're going to repay that and uh, we're going to stand with you because SAG-AFTRA actors absolutely deserve uh, what they get for bringing the words that we write to life. I think I think there's been a talk of like, you know, like when, when we're talking about things like this and yeah. You know, it's like we can't afford to survive in, in this uh-huh. with with the payment that we get. And I think Are that you a Southern Bell. <laughs> we can't we can't afford to survive. And then uh-huh. I think people are like, oh, like that's crazy. You can you can like and and I, I actually with some working class writers and actors, it's the truth. It just is the truth. Yeah. I'm not saying it's that for me and Nick, because we're lucky, but with a lot of working, it's it's you need other jobs. You need you need like people who drive Ubers and the gig economy. I know it's the same thing across the board, and 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 basically every job field in the world now, yes. unfortunately. But here, it's the truth, and there's and and people who are making the most money are taking the most money and giving just little niblets to the people who do all the work and the yeah. creative. So it's it's bad. It sucks. Fundamentally, this podcast mm-hmm. is it's grown to a, a to a good size scope for us, for very luckily. But this is a side hustle for us. Yes. You're an actor. I'm a writer. That's our main discipline. We started this other thing. Hey, you know, you never we know. We don't what the like fuck's... fast food. We don't like fast food. We don't like talking into microphones. We both hate fries. We both hate fries. <laughs> I know that I said it about Nick. We both hate them. <laughs> it's the it, but it, it's it's the it's in it, it would it, you know twenty years ago, twenty five years ago, it, it was completely different, and yeah. that's because you know they actually paid out money to people who worked for it. And that just doesn't happen anymore. The streaming has. I've been talking about this forever. Wise. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about. I hated Netflix the entire time you've known me. Yeah. When I told you some numbers I made from from some of the streaming companies, you've gotten upset. Yeah. And it's just, it's just the way it is. It's it's the way it's been forever. You you like hated Netflix from day one, and I was always like, dude, but House of Cards, man, that show's so good. <laughs> I love that one actor. <laughs> What's his name? I was like, you know what his name is. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, look. I, I feel like I'm not stringing my words together well here. But no, you're doing we'll, great. We'll, ta- we'll talk about this a lot more. We're going to talk about this a lot. It's going to be yeah. an ongoing thing. We'll be out there for as long as we need to be to get that's a fair why deal we thought for both we'd our bring unions. In Adam. Yeah, that's what we thought Adam was <laughs> appropriate was to the have appropriate in the background. Thing to have here. <laughs> Uh, and, and an incredible union member, someone who's has been a, on the front lines. That's true. We were talking about a lot the other day. Of... I asked him today. I was asking him questions about what we can do and what we can't do. Um, which and where, he showed, where, he, which he showed you like an eleven minute video he'd made, <laughs> which was really informative. It was extremely informative. Yeah. And then when the video was done, I was like, I looked at his hair. And I was like, Is it higher? <laughs> um, 
but uh, but yeah, we're still figuring things out. So so, I mean, it's literally starting tomorrow. As of uh, this recording, you're yeah. recording this a little bit of in advance. The mm-hmm. the the we're we're you know. Uh, a lot of this has just happened. That's when we happen to be on the studio. But I want to give everyone a, f- a couple of URLs to check out. First off, sagafterastrike.org. Uh, there you can find out all the information on ongoing pickets, uh, ways you can just get informed and potentially help out. And then, hey, if you're in the L.A. or New York area and there will be pickets everywhere, as there have been in WGA, because there are also going to be, you know, some location dependent pickets. Uh, you can you can just join a picket. You don't need to be a member of a union uh, of these unions or any union to come by as a mm-hmm. picketer and support uh, everyone who's out there. And I know some Doughboys listeners have already done that. I've seen some of y'all on the line, so we appreciate that. The other one I want to shout out can is... I, can I give one to? Yeah. Birdfuck.com. Check out birdfuck.com. Yeah. Um, that's just a great site. It's just a good website. And then also... It doesn't really help with the strike at all, but yeah. it's a good website. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the other one is entertainmentcommunity.org. Um, this is a place where you can, uh, you know, if people are looking to help out with financial assistance for anyone who's potentially pushed out of work, uh, this is for, you know, crew members. Because it, it doesn't just affect actors and writers. When everything gets shut down, um, uh, you know, hair and makeup artists, uh, uh, gaffers, uh, grips, uh, you know, uh, uh, pe- uh, 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 teamsters, uh, uh, drivers, like everyone who works on a set, caterers is poten- is uh, affected by this. So this is a way that some of those people can find some uh, uh, financial relief. And that's a w- thing you can support. You know what? We're going to put up helpful links at birdfuck.com. It'll be on birdfuck.com. We're going so li- to honestly we're gonna... just, <laughs> just go to birdfuck.com. And we'll list all the links that will be helpful. But yeah, Wags, I was just talking to my buddy Eric Edelstein. Great Doughboys guest. A great we guy. did the McPlant, mm-hmm. which they discontinued. I know, insane. We and loved the McPlant, and they were like, "Ah, fuck it, we don't want, we don't want to sell it anymore." He, we, we, we were, we were talking, and and he made a great point of, of how many talented and funny people he's seen have to just pack up and and leave the industry. Yeah, because one hundred percent. Just because they can't afford to live here, they have to give up. Like super talented, funny people. Yes, that can't afford to 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 survive out here and it's, it's not just about that of course it's about being paid your fair share and that's and that's a, that's also happening because there's people who do who can survive obviously we 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 are we manage to live out here and 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 live comfortably but there's a lot of people who are not in the same position as us and 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 it needs to change it's horrible it 100 does and uh yeah hey they again thank you everyone out there for your support and solidarity uh, sagafterastrike.org and entertainmentcommunity.org. Mm. Uh, and of course, uh, birdfuck.com. Birdfuck.com. Uh, but right now- Which I'm not sure if you go to like SAG's website, I don't know if they'll list birdfuck.com, but we'll list- uh, we'll, we'll list li- We'll list those URLs. Yeah, and hopefully they'll also list ours. Hopefully our they'll area. reciprocate. <laughs> anyway, all that said, this is the episode. We recorded it back in June. We have a fantastic guest who we're very excited to talk to. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're talking Taco Bell again. So <laughs> enjoy Taco Bell 8 with Samoa Joe. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, Samosa Dough, the Spoon Man, okay. Mike Mitchell. Wow. That's, That's a great... A, mm-hmm. a very on-point roast for a couple of reasons. In honor of Twisted Metal, congrats, Spoon Man, from Connor. RoastSpoonMan at gmail.com. How about that? I'm in the basement again. You're back in the basement. It does look a little creepy over here. It does look over a little here? creepy, yeah. Who's like, who's people watching the video fade? Who f- uh, feed? Whose space looks creepier, uh, yours or mine? Where like only my face is lit, and you just see a, a dim minion in the background staring dead eyed at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, yours yours looks yours looks pretty terrifying now that you point that out. Yeah, mine looks a little. I have a little boogeyman vibes. Why did you read the boogeyman? You've been reading all the Stephen King books. I'm not up to the boogeyman. The boogeyman I think is a more recent one. Yeah, I'm I'm still in the '80s, but I've been oh, shout out to the right. Just King Things podcast. I uh, you, I've been reading all of uh, uh, Stephen King's books in chronological order. And I heard that you um you kind of got stuck on the at in it at the child orgy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, pages were stuck oh. together. It can get through the rest of the book. <laughs> no one else is going to come on this show. Wise. Yeah. No one else from Twisted. I mean, no. Our guest may leave, possibly. <laughs> um, uh, Wags, where are you now? Are you are you you're you're still in the eighties? I'm getting up to my next book is Cujo. So I just got through mm. Dance Macabre, which is a nonfiction book. Yeah, the devil. And it's dog. kind of Cujo. Not, D- Dance Macabre is kind of just like one of his most coke fueled like treatises. It's just like a real long rant about just like horror movies and TV shows. I heard. Seen. I heard yeah. it's one sentence, right? <laughs> just one big sentence. Um, Wags. Oh God, I I just don't want to do this, but I got to do it because we show? do it in every show. I mean that too. Yeah. Look, we have a cool. Uh, our guest is cool. Our guest is cool. We're thrilled <sighs> to have him. We're both big fans. I'm. And I just I'm don't honestly say... a little starstruck. You've worked with them. Uh yeah. It's uh-huh. it's. But you have your thing. You got to do because that's the how the podcast works. Idaho to Spoon Nation. Ugh. Um. Oh God. Uh, Emma, do we have a drop <laughs> lined up? I'm just realizing that. Okay, no, I, here's I a little. Uh, okay, here's a little drop. Hey, you know okay, what? Oh, God bless Macy Gray. And I, I try. What is it? Called? What? How? What is that song? I, is it? I try. I try to something. I and try to walk. Try I mean, to, you're, she's got like a breathy voice, and I kind of know the tone. Yeah, please. Sing. Oh, oh man, I will stumble. Try to something, something, to something. Some of them, to something, something. You're something, something, something. She's got, she's got a good, distinct voice. You said something after I tried. I couldn't. You, yeah. you didn't say any I other. Re- you I didn't say any this. other words. I thought I knew more of the lyrics. I did not. <laughs> you know, doing this, we haven't been on Zoom in a while. That's true. And and doing this over Zoom just reminds me that like the show was bad. Like we cannot like. We can kind of surprise our guests when they're in the room. You know, you're like, too late now. You're here. Yeah. But over over Zoom, it's like, I feel like they could just walk away at any moment. And it just they're a little less makes me captive. feel bad. It also, yeah. like, you it you really are focused on how much more uh-huh. embarrassing this, because you have, li- like, this is because you have, like, that second delay as to whether there's mm. going to be a laugh after something you do. And then when that doesn't happen, which <laughs> it just doesn't for us, it's like, oh, man, okay. I just hung out there for a bit. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, <clears throat> hey, guys, just randomly came across this drop that I made and submitted four years ago. Fingers crossed that it makes it to the show this time. Nothing to promote, but have a wonderful day. Austin Rowland. That was four years ago? Yeah. When we tried to yep. parse together Macy Gray's lyrics on the fly and were incapable of doing so, that was four years in the past. That's right. Like, tw- we're, what, like, just like to 2019? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. Pre COVID. No, time's, I mean, time's, time's really gone by and we've just kind of gotten fatter. I was looking at, <laughs> <laughs> my mom was asking for photos the other, and I was, I was looking through like old Doughboys photos and we have, yeah. we've gotten, we've gotten considerably fatter. Yeah. And I and I also just cause it like kind of hasn't stopped, um. And I do wonder if it just will never stop happening. If you uh, took like our if you took like our modern photos and then like paired them up with like our year one photos, but just like flipped the order and said they were they would like look like before and after photos. Like yeah, we've both done like slim fast. We both went on Atkins, except also magically de-aged as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to say happy graduation to Danny Ballerino, his graduation, which I'm missing right now. Congrats, Danny. Uh, got a, he's my, my, my cousin's kid. Good, great wow. kid. Anyway, Wags, let's introduce our guest. It's, uh, ver- it's been too thrilled long. Thrilled to have him. Uh, your, your co-star, an actor and wrestler, Samoa Joe is here. Hi, Joe. Thanks so much for making time for us. Oh, pleasure to be here. Good to be with you both. And, wow. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, 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 a, it's fantastic to see you too again, Mitch. You know what I'm saying? And after I'm, I'm that, very happy to see you. You know, when I worked with you, I said, this man has this crazy ability to just project this innate sadness. And now I know where it comes from. Just in the, <laughs> the 10 minutes I've been here. <laughs> and it's so good. You know, like now I see the process and yes. I appreciate you more as an artist now. This is amazing. Wow. <laughs> this is, where you, this is where you derive it all from, huh? This is the well. This is great, man. I'm excited to be here. I'm trying to catch some of this. 
Uh, we're, yeah, we're a lot of it. A lot you. of it comes. A lot of it comes from this basement. This is where a lot of that yeah. sadness came yeah. from. Man, just there is an uncanny forlorn ability that you have, man. And I count me jealous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I am looking when I'm doing this podcast. I am like looking at the. You know, Wags in the Simpsons episode where like Homer's like uh, shadow is burned into the wall. Yes. I can't remember. Place he it goes to his, he goes to his old he goes to his old home and then his oh shat, that's like, right we're sitting in front of the TV yeah right that's like I'm looking at the spot where that where that happened <laughs> for me is, is right in the corner. My mom is also yelling downstairs. She said, "I promise you, I won't interrupt during recording." But she's yelling downstairs. Ma, great. I'm not interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> she, she left. She just I heard the front door close. She maybe said goodbye. Oh, what um, a sweetheart. <laughs> She's a great lady. I'm I'm looking at the spot where I played video uh, Legend of Zelda, uh, Ocarina of Time, Wags. Ocarina of Time. And um, some say Ocarina, and, some say Ocarina. I think it's Ocarina. Yeah. I yeah, always say from Ocarina. the south or not, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a regionalism. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you Joe? I know you you play video games. Uh, oh, yeah. Did you play? Did you play Ocarina of Time? Ocarina of oh, Time? I think, I think everybody did. I mean, it was. It's, I mean, most yeah. most. Of, I think Zelda's kind of one of those generational franchises. Everybody kind of yeah and plays and enjoys whether they like it or not. I know. I know uh, the last two Zelda games. Um, everybody in my family and everybody that around me, especially I was in WWE at the time, were just playing like crazy. And, hey man, have you? <laughs> you know, like it's just weird talking about Link with like grown men. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> are, are you playing well, Tears of the Kingdom Wyvern right now? It's weird so, not talking about it. I, I did start playing Tears of the Kingdom, but unfortunately Diablo started up, and I got a lot of buddies uh, who play that. So oh, here like, we go. They got, they got me roped in, dude. So yeah, you know, you you have a video game coming out in 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 just a month. Oh uh, no, no, next not year, even. next year. Yeah, we got we got pushed, so we're next year. Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Uh, oh, I was yeah, thinking of rad. you in the. I was thinking of. Uh, AEW Fight oh, yeah, Forever. Yeah. Well, I'm actually AEW Fight Forever. I think they're still working on it. You know, I, I kind of got in the company at a weird time during development, so uh, I don't know. Maybe there'll be some DLC at some point, but they're, they're still figuring oh, that out. Oh shit! <laughs> All right. But you're uh, did you did you voices at King Shark in the, the yeah. Suicide Squad game. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, fun. I mean, you know, and really great cast for the game. You know, Tara Strong's amazing as Harley Quinn. And, I mean, uh, from top to bottom, real fun process. So I mean, it, it's the, the the voiceover stuff with the video games kind of a. Uh, kind of a side hustle if you will but it's it's one that i find a lot of fun doing and you know it's just cool being a part of video games yeah. I've played them all my life and to kind of be in there and be a voice in one is always always a fun time uh the i, I want to ask about i want to ask about diablo a little bit i know we got a lot to talk about but but mm. i'm a big diablo franchise fan uh although i have not i didn't pay for the as of this recording like it's like the day that it officially releases yeah, but you're there on was strike, a... dude i get it bro you know you can't do that 99 dollar <laughs> deluxe i mean it's just not feasible in this economic climate. i get it bro you know hey you should have said but, uh, something i'll send you the upgrade dog you know <laughs> stay strong together man you gotta... No, it's, like it's this, fine. Honey. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's it's retail release now, so I can just get I just get my pre order. But I did play some in the the open beta. But I'm curious, like, what is your build? What do you what what character you're running? So I'm running a I'm, I went sorcerer just because I never play sorcerer. I usually play like I play like a, a ranger or a barbarian or something. Right. But uh, said ah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot, and uh, that's pretty cool, man. You know, I'm, I'm running lightning and ice, and. Uh, you know, frying everything that I can and, and really just super nerding out now that I listen to myself say this. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> hey, Wags, um, when you said you play open beta, that's when they open up the game to, like, all the betas across the country. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Doughboys hosts and fans. <laughs> they just want our feedback. Yeah, Joe, it's, it's, it's the hard. sweet beta survey before you actually get into the yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> My wife leveled up my character for me. Oh, God. Yeah, it's like, have you asked permission to be playing this late at night? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. He's in. What are your thoughts when someone's railing your wife? Interesting. That's the boss check. Um, what are her thoughts? She... That's what's important. <laughs> Joe, uh, now... It, it, Annoyingly, Doughboys fans uh, will be demanding tweeting at Tony Khan for the for the Samoa Joe DLC pack, which I can't wait for. Oh yeah, they will um, be. I'm, I'm, you know, there's are they're already kind of up in arms, and you know, I want everybody in the <laughs> roster. So, um, yeah, you know, we'll see. <laughs> you're all over every. I mean, you're all over 
every video game. First of all, you're you're like you said, Suicide Squad, and then you're gonna be in AEW. But then mm-hmm. you got to play one of the the biggest video game characters of all time. And I saw that's it. right. I got the An iconic it. character. It was pretty awesome. I mean, you're right. Sweet I mean, tooth. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess you got me. Oh God, you're the best. Thing. No, no, <laughs> no, that was cool, man. I mean, what can you say? It is sweet tooth, man. Like it's it's a uh, it's kind of an iconic video game character, especially from my youth. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm a, I'm a you know a every game generation guy, so I've been there for everyone. And PlayStation when it launched, you know, Twisted Metal came out, and I remember that was like the couch co op. Let's get down. Oh my God, this is crazy. We're gonna blow up the Eiffel Tower. Uh, you know, type of game. So it's like, uh it's weird getting a call kind of like out, out of the blue, like, Hey man, I want you to screen test for this. And his friend Carter Swan kind of hit me up like after 10 years, it just kind of, you know, I hadn't seen homie in LA forever. And man, I got this crazy part. I think you'd be perfect for it. You know, can you screen test. Like, yeah, sure. And, uh, well, what is it? Uh, do you remember twisted metal? I go, if it's, if it's the kind of, it's the clown. It's all right, here we go, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It is. It is. I feel like that's the conversation with everyone about Twisted Metal. Is like that's yes. the one character yeah, and the one 100%. vehicle that everyone remembers. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it it was that because it was like every time I would bring it up, you know, where you where are you going? Oh, I got to go to New Orleans for a couple months, and you know, what do you film in Twisted Metal? Oh, the crazy clown thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's me. No, like, <laughs> 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 the best you were, you were- is like at this. You know, being a network show, it's like you no. Know, being a wrestling it doesn't matter that I've been on television for 20 years, all this stuff. My mom's like, Oh, a show. This is, Ooh, this is great. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. And, uh, you know, she's, she's all stoked and excited for it, but like, she has no idea what I'm playing or who I am. And, you know, she's a little older and stuff. And so she thinks I'm going to be like, Oh, like, you know, handsome debonair guy, like on the show. And then the first trailer I show him, you know, psycho clown with, <laughs> with machete. And, <laughs> and, ah, she's just like, Wow, that's that's where all my hard work went, right? You know, like, <laughs> raised you up to be a clown. Okay, great. <laughs> I remember when we did Birthday Boys, and then like my mom, I've said this before on the show, but my mom watched, and she's like, "It's just not my sense of humor." And you're like, "Well, what the <laughs> fuck, ma? We have a show. You should be happy. We have a show." Uh, and so you always get that from like pe- people back home. Will just always be like, "Yeah, I didn't like." Maybe they don't it. see it you like good. I see you. That's what I'm saying. Here. There you go. <laughs> We saw a lot of each other. Joe is is insanely good in the show. He's phenomenal. I was going to say phenomenal, but I was afraid I was going to say it wrong. Nah, no and it's not that great. hard of a word to say. Yeah. Um, Every single syllable. You nailed it, bud. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, All four. But, <laughs> but, Joe, the thing I – you and I – not to, I can't get into a, any plot stuff, of course, but mm-hmm. you and I – we spend some time in the show together. I'll say that. Um, and a thing that I – that you gave me a feeling that I've only had a couple times in my life because I'm a big man. I'm a big man, but uh, Joe, you there was like a scene where you had to like grab me, basically. You probably remember yeah. this, where you have to, you <laughs> yeah. kind of have to grab me. Yeah. And for a guy my size to like feel like a little kid, <laughs> it never usually happens. And you made it right. happen for me. You were like picking <laughs> me up like a child, and honestly. It it was fun. It was fun for me. It's a thing well, that I let, missed. That, let's be honest. Could could they have locked us in any hotter boxes the entire time we were filming the show? <laughs> like that's what the show was. Every day it was like, all right. So let's see here. Where's 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 Mitch? Where's Joe? No, the two biggest guys on set. All right, let's get that warm hot box and leave it out there in the sun for a little bit. And <laughs> let's put them in it. Okay, good. And we're about to shoot. You know what? Let's can we just re? Can we move the cameras around a little bit? I don't like the shot. You guys stay in that box. Stay in the box, guys. <laughs> that was literally uh, many of our day shooting was just us in some form of enclosed hot space, just like looking at each other, just going through the struggle. Like, come on, brother, we're gonna get through this sweat fiasco together. It's me and you. Hair dog. and makeup. Me- Hair and makeup was like the, she had like the bottle for sweat, and I think she threw it. <laughs> never in the trash. used it. The fir- <laughs> she never <laughs> used it <laughs> once. She- <laughs> I remember one time she actually walked onto set, two sprays down, and she went, "Oh no." <laughs> and she started wiping us down like, like <laughs> that was my my and my wardrobe they like they were like they were trying to i had i wore like a beige shirt for a while and they were like trying to keep like change it to make it look light again and then at one point they were just like his shirt's gonna look dark throughout the whole thing like the sweat color <laughs> of his shirt 
is oh, now the right. base they're trying to shirt. The, they're trying to keep the uh, maintain the continuity of the shirt throughout the throughout episodes and like yeah they yeah one episode in dude where that thing's stained black and white and sopping wet and <laughs> 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 they i mean they put us in a, 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 a I, I believe it was a mail truck that the yeah. that your ice cream truck is was made out of, mm-hmm. and there's no and it made me feel so bad for uh, male men and male women across the country for the for the last thirty years. Why? There's no AC. There's no AC in them. They're the hottest fucking cars <laughs> in the world. They were. It was so yeah. fucking hot. It was insane. We have a lot of we have a lot of po- uh, postal workers, a good number of postal workers who listen to the podcast, listen on their their routes, and yeah, that's a that's a tough job. Thank you for your service. No oh, AC it, in the. It was fucking crazy. Yeah, and, and and you know, not to mention the uh, the 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 uh, suspension on a lot of those things, especially when you're bumping around the desert, are definitely not the best. <laughs> oh yeah, horrible. <laughs> and also, like you said, on top of it, New Orleans in we started in like May June, so it was mm-hmm. perfect. It was the perfect. It was a perfect storm of of sweat. Your character was supposed to be like hulking and sweaty anyway. Yeah, so it and, worked um, out great for me. The only problem was. Uh, you know, like they come and you know get me all greasy for the for whatever scene. It was like after a couple of scenes, we both had sweated so much that by the time I was like glistening clean, I you know like oh, okay, dirty him up again, get some mud, you know like I don't know, roll him in some dirt, get him back up on set. Uh, can can I ask about because the the other element of the character there is a headpiece, and what was it mm-hmm. like wearing that headpiece oh, in man. terms of like like visibility in terms of being able to breathe. <laughs> Uh, it was it definitely wasn't made for breathability. Oh, well, I will say oh, that. <laughs> uh, yeah, wearing the mask was uh, it, it. It wasn't as bad as you would think it was, but it definitely uh, made a 112 degree day <laughs> in New Orleans a lot tougher to shoot. In. <laughs> oh my god, it's insane! It was insane. I, I, uh, they had emergency cool down trailers for us, Wags, which was just. Like a you know, like a U-Haul trailer, like that you would hitch to a back of a truck. Yeah, it was just one of those with a a square cut in it with an AC. So it was like you just would stand in the back of like, and it, they would keep it at sixty degrees. But I went and visited that bad boy a few times. I think I tried to sleep in it one night. I love. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's my a way lot, in lot there of in between like shot runs runs over to the tra- ice trailer and just okay, dude, you got I got to cool down now. <laughs> <laughs> It was awful. We, hey, if they do another season, I and which I hope they do, mm-hmm. hopefully we'll shoot in September or October oh, or somewhere. Yeah, a nice little win. Oh, I mean, a fall shoot. Oh my goodness! That's it. <laughs> oh man, give us that. Give so us good. that hurricane season. That's what you we know. Do. What I mean, give me give me a little drizzle yeah. in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you're down in New Orleans. You're shooting this obviously a great food city, and I heard a lot from yeah. Mitch about his time in, in uh, down in the Bayou and and some of the food that he had. Uh, but I'm curious, Joe, like, do you have anything memorable from on set or from like visiting any local restaurants? Uh, food food was always really good on set. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think in Louisiana in general, like especially New Orleans, it's just they're everywhere you go, you're going to get a decent meal. I mean, they just right. have a a cooking culture down there that just demands that things are done a certain way and. Um, I mean, countless restaurants down there. I mean, from uh, uh, a lot of really good Vietnamese food down there now. I mean, yes. had, uh, I mean, really good. Like, you know, where I grew up, I grew up in a predominantly Vietnamese neighborhood in California. And like, you know, I remember, uh, you know, eating there and, and it being pretty good. And, and this being on par with that, you know, and, you know, because I, I was down in Garden Grove. So like Little Saigon right. area and stuff like that. So, um, oh, man, other than that, I mean. We got some crab claws together. Yeah, we got some that? crab claws over at Toops. We did. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm trying to remember the place. We, the Porta Call Burger. I don't know. That's a yeah. Ma- yeah Anthony Mackey put me on that, and he's and it's a place called Porta Call Little Bar, and I think right Porta Call. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they do these incredible burgers. I mean, these big, huge, juicy, you know, kind of like bar burgers. And then like a massive baked potato, like a baked potato that's too big to be eaten by anybody that's fully loaded. And yeah. you go in there, you eat one of those, you're not eating for another two days. because It's just, it's incredible, man. <laughs> it's really, really good. And, it, and a, like you can get a big hurricane, the drink, the hur- you can yeah, get yeah, like the, a, yeah, you a also giant get a huge fruity hurricane drink. Where they throw every single liqueur in one cup and you pretty much black out and die as you walk home with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-uh. Do you like a big, like, sort of, like, tiki drink? Because I know that's a thing that Mitch loves. Loves a big uh, tropical So, cocktail. Be- because my parents worked extensively a lot in the during the tiki boom and the tiki business in the, the 60s and 70s, kind of grew up uh, in a 
tiki bar environment, Sam's Seafood, the Tijan Terrace mm. at Disney where my dad worked. And um, so, yeah, I like a good tiki drink. And I think, like, uh, if you can have, like, an original recipe Mai Tai, and the Mai Tai now is kind of just, like, rum and all this stuff, but there's an original recipe Mai Tai that you can find. Oh, man, it's my favorite. It's my favorite tiki drink of all time. I mean, it's just that perfect wow. balance, not super sweet, you know, good little easy drinker, and you can put down 20 of them and, you know, have a great night. <laughs> I love I, I love I love I love the the original I've tried to make like the classic Mai Tai with a dry curacao and yep. the, and like there's and because the, a lot of times now if you get it somewhere it's like pineapple juice and orange juice that yeah they just put in a bunch it. of rum and <laughs> right Wait, Joe where'd you say your dad worked in, in Disney so my dad actually he worked he was hired by Walt Disney who he started the Tijan Terrace like Polynesian show that was in Adventureland when it first started up holy so, shit wow. yeah he worked that's there for, fantastic yeah, he worked there for a year. I mean, for through most of my youth, and then uh, later on, my brother actually took over, and he was a fire knife dancer, and the and he worked on the show too. So, um, yeah, it's wow. pretty cool. Like I kind of grew up, uh, you know, backstage at Disney my entire life, and you know, playing That's basketball awesome. uh, in the Matterhorn and shit like that. So, wow, um, yeah, wow. It was, you know, it was a wild time. But you know, like I said, a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, Disney's always kind of been around in my family. I think my brother actually still does do shows for them in the in the hotel out there now. So um yeah you know uh just that like i said they he started during like the the big boom of tiki bars in the 60s and 70s i uh, met my mom and they started a show together but uh yeah i mean just because of that i mean i kind of grown up backstage in this polynesian dance troupe and you know at tiki bars and kind of i mean we were essentially tiki bar culture in southern california for years you know so it's kind of yeah i know a lot Amazing. about tiki drinks let me tell you <laughs> that's fucking awesome <laughs> wow. i love it have you been have you been able to go to any of the LA tiki spots tiki tea or um Tonga uh hut I think is in is in North Hollywood yeah I've been to Tonga so those hut. The, um, yeah yeah like I, I I've been to them you know and, and a lot of them but like down in southern like uh in Orange County they had like Kona Hawaii uh I think Sam's is now um Don the Beachcomber but uh which is a play on the old original Don the Beachcomber in Hawaii but I mean th- that's kind of like where we were and uh um yeah, it's just weird. Like, it, there's still a few that survive up in Los Angeles, but like a lot of the ones down in Orange County just have kind of dried up and gone away. It's sad, but um, it's a cool like little snapshot of time. And like, if you got to go out at, to a tiki bar at night and like have one of those luau evenings, it was a really good, it was awesome evening and an awesome show. So, um, who That's knows, awesome. man? Maybe there, maybe there'll be a revival someday. I think That's still so, on yeah. my list to stay at the. I've never stayed at the Polynesian and Disney World, and I wanna I wanna stay there. It's it's oh, like everything. Well, it's well right up my alley. Yeah. 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 Joe, wait, uh, you're, you're, drinks air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the opposite of twisted metal, just with the AC. Um, I, <laughs> Joe, my, 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 uh, you, you, you said you told me. I mean, you were like, let's eat one. Yeah. You know, like we both were like, let's eat. We want to go out, and that was for me was the 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 real continuity continuity issue for me is that like my belly started to come, like my shirt was riding up my belly. Oh no, you can't not shoot. be in New Orleans and not get fat, dude. If you do, there's, <laughs> I mean, insane. I think you have a drug problem. That's the only way you can probably avoid. Like, <laughs> it's incredible because like everything down there, they sneak butter into everything. Yeah. You know, like I, I went, I, I actually went and got a chicken. Like, a, oh, I'll, I'll get this chicken wrap, and then as I watched her made it, she slathered the tortilla with butter, fried it, <laughs> put it. I was like. I don't even know why I got the turkey wrap, man. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a Mitchell family move. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it was re- real slick, you know. <laughs> that that's even the on like you said the on set food was like fantastic. Just at the end of the day, to have like a delicious creme brulee and shit for yeah. it, it it was messed up. I mean, it was so so good. But you're 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 a food guy, and I'm I'm guessing being amongst other wrestlers, you've 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 seen a lot of big eaters in your time. Oh, is there massive. anyone that you remember s- specifically as the biggest eater you've ever met or any and, or any any feats of eating you've ever witnessed backstage? Yeah, so uh, th- this is actually an old story. And this is like goes back to when I started. And it was uh, actually John Cena and Frankie Kazarian. Two guys. So okay. Frankie Kazarian currently works in TNA. John Cena is John Cena. And uh, we were at my house. We had just got done doing a wrestling show. It was probably midnight. You know, we were all kind of crashing on my pad because we had another show the next day. So... We got back there. You know, my pops, really great host no matter what time of night. We get there. It's probably, you know, like I said, it's midnight, and my dad just starts cooking. And he cooks, like, a pan of chicken breast and all this stuff for all the guys. There's about five of us, and and the guys start eating. And there's, you know, two little sheet trays of chicken breast, like, completely full with, like, grilled chicken breast. And, you know, I have one or two, one or two. 
and John and Frankie just start like going one to one on these grilled chicken breasts. And they get through like two trays, which A, I was amazed my dad had whipped up two trays. Like, what are you doing, Pop? It's like one o'clock in the morning, you know, like, it's four of us. Like, they... So they get through two trays of chicken and like they're now like fa- facing each other face to face, like just trying to shove Lenny, like, I'm not giving up before you give up. I'm not giving up before you give up. And uh, finally, they just finished all the chicken in the house, and there was nothing left to eat, and uh, they called it a draw. But <laughs> wow. Wow. But I would say it was probably that. good. Like, they probably both ate six pounds of chicken, if not that's more. That's fucking like, impressive. <laughs> that's wild. See, that's funny because we're like, you know, wags. We're food guys. That's but then true. we're also not good at that. Like, we both would tap out at, like, a pound and a half or something. We're We'd be totally, like, yeah, we'd be we'd be totally alpha in that situation. Yeah. Of like, oh, here are the food pos- podcasters. Here they go. I was like, oh, wait, the doughboys are like throwing up and crying. Like, <laughs> oh, God. I don't want chicken anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, another I, place. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is, well, you're probably going to go into this. Go for it, Wags. Yeah, I wanted to ask because you, you mentioned being from Garden Grove. Like you, I am from Southern California. I've lived oh, here no. my whole life, and I am... Uh, there's a place that Mitch told me that you mentioned, which is a place I have a lot of affection for, which is Tommy's Burger. Oh, Tommy's. I mean, really one of the unsung heroes of Southern California. Uh, for sure. But, but like, and, and, I, and I actually saw that you guys talked a little bit about Tommy's in a past podcast. And, and, yeah, way back in the day, yeah. Yeah, and, and I will say this, like, you guys brought up some good points. A, if it's, the, if it's daylight out and you're ordering a Tommy's Chili Cheeseburger, you better be a day laborer. Okay. <laughs> You better have been working in some kind of field and or outside with a tool. If right. you are in a nice car and you pull into Tommy's and you order lunch, you're a disgusting piece of shit. I mean, there's no, you, unless you do hard, <laughs> physical, manual labor. Like, like Tommy Burger is the burger of the people, of the working man. It really, right. truly is. You will not find anything but drywall trucks, lawn, land, you know, landscapers. I mean, that's, that's who parks during the day. During the day at Tommy's and eats Tommy's chili because you need a brick of meat chili to get you through whatever hard day of work that you got going. Now, the rules change drastically after about 930 at night. At 930 at night, uh, a Tommy's chili double chili cheeseburger ensures that your drunk asshole friend will fall the fuck asleep immediately. And it's an, it's an age old tactic. We all have an asshole drunk friend who just, well, we're going to go to another bar, man. F- fuck it. We're going all night. That asshole exists in our lives, right? Like, we all right, know him course. or her. You know, she's she's there. He's there. So what you do is you let Wag- them get good liquor. thinking though. of me, by the way, right now. Yeah, yeah. He's going to <laughs> shove a, a Tommy's double chili cheeseburger down your gullet. He's going to give you the fries. You're not going to know what the fuck they are because it's just like a big glob of chili over something that you hope is fries underneath. And then... You will eat that. It will become a 42-ton brick in your stomach, and your mm. assholery of the night will be completely over because you won't be able to move. And that is the but, beauty of Tommy's Chili Cheeseburger is that it's for the working man and for the drunk asshole. And you can't ask for much more out of a fast food restaurant chain. The assholery is at an end, but the asshole work is about to begin in yes, sir. a couple hours. <laughs> Christ, Tom. I, I, li- I like how I like how kind of just to, in why well, we said this about uh, about uh, uh, Zodiac that I said it was like beautifully boring and I meant it as a compliment. Yeah, of course. Kind of mundane stuff. But uh, Tommy's to me, I, I, like I love how kind of fucking nasty it is. It's a little oh, it's yeah. a little nasty. It's a little twisted, little nasty place. But it doesn't get its flowers the way In and Out Burger does, the way even or Del even Taco a Fat does. Burger. I feel like, I, sure, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think that I think it's just like you know, a lot of Tommies have closed. There's also a lot of Tommies clones, which is a thing. Mm-hmm. Like I know there's yeah. like there's like a you know there'd be like big Tommies uh, or like Tommies with one M. You know, there was there was a, a place that was Thomas's that was just a Tommies clone. It's like the equivalent of like all the the famous original Ripley? Rays. In New yeah. York, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, oh. yeah. <laughs> I thought you were saying the Ripley, the Waylon Yutani Ripley clones. It kind of is like that. There, some of yeah, there's some of that too. Very shitty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think there's, I, I, so, so I think that probably dilutes the brand a little bit. But yeah, I love Tommy's, and I, when they close, I get bummed out because it's just like that's such, that to me is such a Southern California institution. And like you were saying, Joe, yeah, it's such a it's such a working class thing. It, it very much is, and I think that's like why I love it because like 
you know, we'd come off of doing shows in like, and it's open 24 hours. It's another wonder, right. wondrous thing about it. So, you know, we'd come off of shows, you know, d- doing apology shows with our family, maybe, you know, 12, 30, one o'clock in the morning. And it was like, we didn't eat cause we were dancing for the majority of the afternoon. It's like our pop would roll in there, you know, four or five Tommy chili cheeseburgers. And like, you know, the whole house is passed out within half hour and you know, <laughs> on to the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You know what I, there was one on Sunset. Joe, do you have do you have a do you have an order? Do you have a go to order there? Do you, do you have oh, something yeah, I that think you it's love the, there? Number two, the double chili cheeseburger, chili cheese fries. I mean, that's that's all you can eat. I mean, if you can yeah. eat more than that, I mean, yeah. ooh, that's you know? a good point. <laughs> okay, you're really McDonald- tempting fate there. McDonald's, I always get a little side, you know, the little side sandwich with my sandwich, you know, like, but oh, the the extra burger. So, now, let me ask you your 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 your, your approach on this. Do you do mm-hmm. a premium burger and then you get one of those dollar menu burgers on the side or something like that? It depends okay. on like you, you can admit it. It's all right. No, it's not. We're all friends here. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> honestly, it depends on like what on what level of like you said earlier you know how i how i just give off that sadness it depends yeah. on how much of that sadness is coming <laughs> off of me how much i'm in, emanating but i for me it's usually same i go to mcdonald's i get the big mac meal i usually get a spicy mcchicken sandwich too that's like what i'll do but then at wendy's i'll do the spicy chicken sandwich and a lot of the times i'll do a junior cheeseburger deluxe but sometimes if i'm like I'm hungry and I want to eat. I'll do a Dave's single or a Dave's double even. I'll See, go, so I notice you do a, a, some something a, a little bit of like mind math that I do, where I think if I if the second sandwich is a chicken sandwich, somehow, right. some way, and I know he's laughing right now because this is <laughs> it's yeah. a chicken sandwich. Therefore, these extra calories really aren't that many more calories. I mean, it's, I had an extra piece of chicken. I mean, relax, right? Is that? <laughs> cool dude that so i'm bad. not the only one that, I, i'm not the only one that kind of thinks that way i get it but hey brother all right man i see you you know we need to talk hey the more we talk about this the more people we're helping man all right <laughs> <laughs> it is it is and it's funny when you'll look at you'll look at the calories for it and it's like oh this is like as much as a big mac almost they've just it's oh, a yeah. fried chicken patty it's not gonna yeah, be yeah. great it, for it, you, it is not any it, better for you whatsoever but in our mind white meat got to be better yes. right you know like that dave's double that's, that'll kill me but this chicken sandwich it'll just give me a little indigestion not a big deal right <laughs> that's my mom made turkey sloppy joes last night and i ate like three of them <laughs> i ate three turkey sloppy joes and she's because like a good it's health turkey it, right it's it, turkey, it, it, turkey. Yeah, yeah there you go but she was confused too she was like a good healthy dinner and i was like oh i couldn't fucking move <laughs> she doesn't fucking she doesn't she doesn't know anything about my mom has no idea about like portion stuff, so she was just like, "You no. ate healthy tonight," and I fucking, I shoved it all in my face. I ate a ton of that sloppy rolls. Joe mixture. Hey, she just looks great. at you and goes, "You're breathing, right? All right, you're fine." <laughs> 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 I did good job. <laughs> well, look, we have a lot of Taco Bell to discuss, so let's oh, yeah. take a break. Wow. We'll be right back with more Doughboys. You know what's not fair? The fact that streaming services hide thousands of shows and movies from you based on your location and then has the nerve to just keep increasing their prices on you. Now you could just cancel your subscription and protest, or you could be smart about it and make sure you're getting your full money's worth by using ExpressVPN like I do. That's right, Wags. What you might not know is what's on your streaming networks in your country is completely different from what someone in the UK or South Korea has on theirs. Using ExpressVPN, you can control which country you want your internet to think you're in. ExpressVPN has over 90 countries to choose from, so every time I run out of stuff to watch, I just switch to another country to unlock new shows. Wags, right now I'm watching a show and it's not on in the U.S., but with just one tap of a button, ExpressVPN lets me change my location to Canada. Canada, mate. Oh, yeah, I'm in Canada, mate. (laughs) That's right. Once I'm in Canada, mate, I can watch it. And here's the best part, Mitch. It's not just for whatever you're watching. It's just for one streaming service. You can use ExpressVPN to unlock shows and other streaming services, too. ExpressVPN is also super fast and works on your phone, laptop, even smart TVs, so you can watch your shows on the big screen with zero buffering. And you know what? A big hello to all of our listeners up in Canada, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash doughboys. Don't forget to use our link so you can get three extra months free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash doughboys. Expressvpn.com slash doughboys to learn more. 
Hey, buddy, the climate between your cheeks is about to get capital M muggy. Swamp ass plus dry TP don't mix, resulting in shreds of toilet paper all up in your business. Avoid that sticky sitch by switching to Hello Tushy Bidet. I got my Hello Tushy Bidet installed, and I love it. It's in one of my many wow. bathrooms. That's right. I have multiple bathrooms. Mm. That's what everyone likes to joke about. I got a <laughs> bunch of bathrooms, but I got a Hello Tushy Bidet in my bathroom, and that thing makes me clean as a whistle. Nice and cool. Cleans everything out. I go to wipe. Hey, everything's gone. There's nothing left to wipe. It's perfect. It feels nice. It looks great on my toilet. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's perfect. Mitch, Hello Tushy Bidet, as you know, cleans your bum two times better than wiping and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. Wow. Wags, it attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Wow. Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself in a few months, and every Hello Tushy Bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty, Wags. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of people already love Hello Tushy. Go to hellotushy.com forward slash doughboys and use promo code doughboys to get 10% off plus free shipping on your first bidet order. That's hellotushy.com slash doughboys for 10% off. Do it. Welcome back to Doughboys. We're here with Samoa Joe discussing Taco Bell. Mitch, our eighth review of Taco Bell. Uh, we they have some new menu items, Jesus. and we thought we'd revisit it. Yeah, this is Taco Bell eight. Do you have any any first off? First off, well, I have, I want to ask Joe about uh, Taco Bell in general. But first off, Mitch, during the break, you told me you had something you I wanted just, to convey. I want I wanted to say something earlier when 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 Joe said like, "Hey, we all played Ocarina or Ocarina of Time," mm -hmm. and it reminded me of someone just told me that he was was Leo. Leonardo DiCaprio's assistant and he was cleaning up his place and he packed up his PlayStation 5. This is a I person you he, know? Yeah, yeah, a person I know. Wow. And so somewhere out there Leo's online fucking you know, destroying noobs. It's you he's know, playing he's, he's Horizon he's, for oh, he plays West. FIFA. He plays FIFA for yeah, he, sure. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah real. Sense. Makes yeah. Sense. That's a real that's a real Euro trash move to do, you know, just be a big old <laughs> FIFA master. <laughs> I love look, it. Look at how super international into, like, I, demon souls. I play at the soccer. You know, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe, I, I'm curious about it because you know Taco Bell ubiquitous. I imagine you you've you've had it a lot in your life. Uh, what, what, do you have any thoughts on Taco Bell coming in? I, I think the base Taco Bell menu is a strong lineup. I think uh, uh, there's very few of the specialty items. I think are you know nothing more than a really interesting rearrangement of the base items so uh sure yeah i think they got a strong open like starting lineup uh, but i think some of their uh more ambitious offerings are a little bit uh more smoke and mirrors than actually you know like a good meal <laughs> mm, interesting they they, they 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 try to we've talked about this before we because i at one point said taco bell was my favorite restaurant which i do it maybe is in some way i love taco bell but I think you know, you're right more and they... more of this sadness onion is starting to unfurl itself <laughs> to me, and I'm I'm really I'm getting it now. I'm getting it. I am sadly like death row meal. Maybe would be like <laughs> some Taco Bell <laughs> for killing my co-host. Um, <laughs> I just can't do it in the wrong state, Wags. Um, I uh, <laughs> I'm not stopping I, uh, you. Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. Um, <laughs> I, I, Joe. I think that sometimes they try to do some menu items, and they just some new menu items, and they just strike out. Um, sure. Which I wonder if today, I, I, I don't know, Nick, if you tried any of the of the new offerings, or you did, Joe. But but oh, I, don't I know did. If today will yep. be a, a a part of a, you know, if if some of the strikeouts came with some of their new with some of their new items. But a cheesy gordita crunch to me is up there with uh, that's like Big Mac territory. I usually like. I to me, to me like, that's graduated to like that's like a that's like a core Taco Bell menu item in my brain yeah. now. No, I think it like is. I, and it, yeah, but I, but I like the I'm, I'm a ground beef man at Taco Bell. That's what I like more than mm. and this maybe is what you're getting at, Joe. Like I like I I go with the ground beef over I over chicken or steak mm -hmm. or anything fancy like that. But I will say I had a decent experience with steak today. Oh. I uh, I was surprised at my. 
this is a this is a thing that people who eat vegetarian and I'm I'm not exclusively vegetarian, but I try to to have less meat in general these days. And I a, a thing that ve- that people who eat vegetarian have have pointed out, and I'll just say it again because it, it's what I did in this particular visit. The Taco Bell app is very much not crap. It makes it very easy for you to substitute black beans for any protein or whatever beans, and that actually it actually works pretty well for a lot of menu items. So I do appreciate that about this chain, and also I think this is like. As far as size and and scale, I think this is this is the the most veggie friendly fast food restaurant. Hmm. I mean, it's like you can there. you can you can eat versions of basically the entire menu without meat. And so, you know, vegan it gets a little trickier, but there's the there's things you can finagle. So that that's to me is a big advantage of Taco Bell. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's and. It, 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 we've talked about this before that it's like weirdly slightly healthier in some way. Well, not healthier, but there's no there's no real fried. Yeah, food we're not talking here, turkey except... sloppy joes here, but it's a little healthier. <laughs> <laughs> My mom, I brought the Taco Bell. This is this is when I'm recording at home. I brought the Taco Bell into the basement to eat because. I didn't want my mom like hovering over me and being like, don't finish that. Cause she was going to do that. <laughs> so I brought it into the basement to eat, which is so pathetic <laughs> as a 40 year old man to hide in the basement to eat my Taco Bell. Oh, it's man. still here. In a perfect it world, she would here. walk down and still do it. <laughs> Did you finish that yet? <laughs> Pouring milk on it so I don't finish yeah. it. Um, it's terrible for I, you. <laughs> I um I I the Quincy Taco Bell is a like half KFC half Taco Bell wise. I talked about this in the past. And I was afraid that I wasn't gonna have any luck here because right now the Enchirito is back. That's the big news. The That's Enchirito right. is back. Enchirito is and did back. Did you get it? I, well, did. I did. I did as well. All three of us got wow. it. Wow. I have to say though, I, I though I'm not a uh Taco Bell app adopter. I did it, it. I did have a bit of problem with this online exclusive business because, like, oh no! I'll tell you why. It, 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 I, I'm at Taco Bell and I'm driving. I'm, dri- I'm driving over to somewhere else to, you know, do a gig and um, sitting there. And like at first, I, I read your notes that oh, it's an online exclusive thing, and I didn't really put two and two together. So I go through the drive through. Hi, can I get an Trito? Oh, I'm sorry, that's an online only item. Ah, okay. Uh, so you have to order it online. All right. So I get out of <laughs> the drive through line, park my car, do the order online. And granted, I, that's my, uh, that's on me. But I get my Enchirito and I get in my car and it's an, and I've had the Enchirito before and I'm looking at it and I like a good enchilada and, you know, I love a good little pepper sauce some nice ground beef, some cheese. But I'm looking at this Enchirito. I'm going, this is the item that I had to get out of line for. <laughs> get online. <laughs> Give up my government details <laughs> to a mega corporation. <laughs> and this. Yo, that's fucked. Oh, my God. Uh, Who's going to do that to Samoa Joe? <laughs> I'd be fucking. I'd say you can get whatever you want. I mean, I'm, did you did you just you should have just given him a fucking look or something. Right. When he, I, he oh, I, bowed did. Down. I went, I went, I, I almost went into the. Hey, listen. So you're telling me I have to go over there, there, get on my phone. In order there, and then come back here, and then I can get it. And she's like, "Well, that's kind of how." Was. And I was just like, "Oh, whatever." So, oh man! And I left a little bit of sour taste in my mouth. But as far as the enchilada goes, it's a it's a nice little item. It should be on the regular menu. You know, it's 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 got really great base components: little cheese, nice little sauce on top. You know, all wrapped up nice and warm with a, a little bit of extra ground beef. It does look way bigger in the photo. This is one of those things, and I actually photographed it in my car. That when you take a picture of the Enchirito, they've worked out the dimensions of this bastard. That any photo it shows up and it looks two times as big as it really is. One hundred percent. Yeah, it, no, it, you're absolutely right on that. It's it's some weird science they got because I I looked at the picture of the Enchirito. I go, I get the Enchirito. I look at it in my car. I'm looking at it in my hand. I'm saying this is not the m- massive thing I saw in the advertisement. And then I take a picture of it with my camera. I'm actually going to send to you. Hey, I got the Enchirito. We're all good. I take a picture of the Enchirito. And the thing looks massive in my iPhone. I'm like, what? The? Like, it just it grew like. <laughs> so Taco Bell has definitely figured out some magic science about how how the Enchirito is photographed. You should yeah, never have a sour taste in your mouth after you leave Sour Bell, unless Taco Bell, unless it's 
sour cream, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, sweet, yeah, unless you supreme that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> this, this will make this you podcast... even more mad. Is that I didn't? Ha- I ordered it and they just gave it to me. They didn't care. <sighs> oh, they didn't make you go online only. Wow. No, no. But what are you gonna say? Why is this podcast? I was what? gonna say this podcast is already such an imposition on our guest time because our sh- our episodes are so fucking long, and then to hear someone <laughs> like as as busy as you had to like take time out of your schedule to like pull into a parking space and download an app, it just like <laughs> it just it just makes like, me feel like so uh, such like such a piece of shit for doing this. Yeah, we're fucking show. losers. <laughs> you're 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 in between like two wrestling shows where in like. I woke up and was like, Mommy, can I borrow your car to go to Taco Bell? And she was like, <laughs> if you promise not to get too much, we're fucking losers. Why? You know this. <laughs> it's clear. You knew this from the beginning. Yeah. but It's true. I So I rolled out of bed and I went to the I went to the Taco Bell in Quincy. I thought I was going to have to drive to West Roxbury, Wags, because there was a... Uh, that on the on the app that was the only one that came that's the the half taco bell half kfc didn't come up on my app in quincy and i was like is this not gonna have any of the any of the specialty items or the new items and this stuff you can only only order through the apps and i went down to the quincy one they had they had everything they got i had i the only thing they didn't have was one of the any of the frozen drinks but uh i got the enchirito as well i think you're right that they make it look bigger uh, it's it's still so I got the I got the salsa verde the steak salsa verde is this am I saying it right the steak yeah. verde yeah, chili I think it's they chili verde yeah that's what it is okay steak chili verde fries I, I oh god I still said it bad but I got the fries and I got and they both are in the kind of a similar container but the fries have a lot more going on this is like just one taco with the enchirito in 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 a container makes it seem bigger than it is and a lot of sauce there's just a lot of sauce on top of this thing um it's I mostly like the taste sauce. of it yeah it is it's mo- it is mostly sauce that's the other thing too i liked the taste of it all right i don't know how you guys felt but i but joe i'm with you i think it should be a regular menu item i don't know why it's not well i'm saying i'm saying like if you're going to make me download an app you're going to make me register and do all this stuff. <laughs> I want a crunch wrap triple supreme. I want some ridiculous item that like I uh, I'll, the only way I'm going to get it is I have to do that. You know, like I want something completely outlandish to actually justify me having to explain to my loved ones why there's a Taco Bell app on my phone. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's there's a cost to these things, you know. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. But t- for me, the Taco Bell app is my first page on my phone, and then all the other apps are on the second page on. The first <laughs> one is just right in the middle. Um, yeah, I think online exclusives are just kind of stupid anyways. Come on. I, I agree, and it's just a way to drive people towards doing what, what Joe had to do, which is download the app and getting them into their, getting into their, that ecosystem. I, I, I will say about the Enchirito. The I I I eighty six the beef and I got extra beans so I just basically had like a bean and cheese uh, burrito that was you know top top with all that mild sauce slathered and, um, slathered slathered sauce. slathered <laughs> absolutely slathered. just drenched. Uh, <laughs> N- Natalie had uh, my wife Natalie like had a lot of we shared a lot of this and her take her take generally was just like everything tastes wet, which <laughs> I, I think is pretty much pretty accurate. Just a general, a general wetness to everything. This <laughs> one, I think that was quality to this whole meal. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think that red sauce doesn't have a ton of flavor. I took a bunch of that Diablo and just sort of slathered it over it. Uh, you Great know, just call. to yeah, and and that just to give it a little bit of heat because I'm a bit of a heat seeker. I also added sour cream to mine, and I think that did help it. But yeah, I don't know why I would get this because I had it. I had as a control group. I had a just a regular bean and cheese burrito. On the side, I just preferred that. I don't think I need it slathered in all this mild sauce. Uh, well, the chili you, verde fries, you know the chili what? verde fries, burrito, I both got veggie. Go on, Mitch. With the enchirito, you know what I think the issue is. I I what? looked when I ordered. I looked in the kitchen, and the guy putting the sauce on it was Peter North. Oh, that was the problem. Yeah, that's the slathering. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it makes sense now. That's what he does. Yeah, he's a slatherer. He was like, he's like, this is a normal load, right? And he's put, just fucking pouring <laughs> oh, no, the sauce Peter. on. <laughs> But he's great on the register is the thing. So yeah. they're like, all right, we got to keep this guy. <laughs> is that line moving? Uh, the chi- chili verde fries and the chili verde fries burrito. Here's my take. I think the burrito is much better than the fries. I think the fries on their own are kind of like, 
it, you just get weird bites versus like the the burrito. Everything is wrapped in tight and it's dense and it's concentrated. And I feel like every bite I was getting for that burrito was satisfying. And the fries we had a lot of bad bites. We have the opposite take. Wow. I'm the complete opposite. I like the fry. I love burrito. I always want the burrito version. And I thought the burrito was just a little too dry. I thought like I, I, it just didn't it didn't work as well for me. I thought the I thought the fries did a better job. I think that the strips were too much because they put like the tortilla chips on the fries, which didn't work for me. But mm, I, I agree. Yes, I, I liked the I liked the fries more than the burrito. Fuck. I, you know what? It might. Here's here's the only thing I would say that could be a factor is that again I I I got the veggie version. I did not get it with steak, so mine had black beans. So oh, maybe that made the okay. difference. Yeah. 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 This can but, only be settled with a knife fight, guys. I'm sorry. This is <laughs> <laughs> man. Be the saddest thing to see. <laughs> the chili verde knife fight. <laughs> yeah. And both of us crying after we just like <laughs> prick each other. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they using Dude, butter you knife? No, you let go first. <laughs> <laughs> the butter knife fight would be great. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like Michael Jackson. And Benny. <laughs> <laughs> You'll link hands. <laughs> Just, Just slather slathering each other with butter. Yeah. <laughs> We'd have that New Orleans sweat going, too. I don't think yeah. <laughs> That that's interesting. I I mean, uh, Joe, did you have a your uh, your chili verde? Did you have the chili verde fries? The chili verde fries burrito? I didn't do the chili fries burrito, but I did mm -hmm. have the the verde chili fries. And I kind of I kind of agree with you. Like the the whole fry thing, it's just it, you get an uneven bite. So it's like yeah, unless you have a I get like, that yeah, just like the perfect kind of little setup where everything landed just in the right spot and it worked out. It, it it's like a little jumble. It's like you know you kind of get like oh a couple fries oh there's a little chili verde sauce and some meat here and it's just like yeah, yeah. I, it yeah. just it didn't it didn't work as a concept for me. One hundred percent. Like I'll I'll, like the, I'll do a chili cheese fries any day over that. Oh yeah. It was like the Game of Thrones map. It was like the one corner had <laughs> fucking sour cream and then all the way up in the other corner was fucking guacamole. It was, well, that was like the problem it was, too, was that I, I did the the classic like uh, you know where they put it in the back sideways and then your dumbass like accidentally slides it off and Oh it, uh, fuck. So yeah, oh, like half yeah. the ingredients were on one side of the, the <laughs> the garden there. <laughs> sometimes that can be a nice little it can sometimes that can create a nice goop. I don't oh, intentionally yeah. goop something up, but sometimes that can work and sometimes it can completely ruin something. I think it's one way no, or the other. This may sound crazy. I have a buddy who will take a full nacho bel grande every time. And I thought he was oh, crazy man. for the first time he did it and he will shake it like a salad. Wow. That's and then, insane. Hey, That's then he pop off the to top me. and then I was like, "Oh, but it's kind of a mess." He's like, "Yeah, but then you use use the lid for like a dip for all the extra sauce and all the stuff's mixed up with the chips and I was like you're, you're brilliant like, like <laughs> oh my gosh you know I should start buying weed from this guy every week this is not because <laughs> I mean that would be the guy that would know exactly how to do that <laughs> of course 100% yeah Doughboys fans it was it was know, Emma with was a mustache fun. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I would never uh, that to me. That's I would never. I could never. It seems like that. you're messing up a Picasso, right? Like what are, yeah, what are, yeah. what are we talking about here? But then as that's, you opened it up, I was like, the, there is actually some even distribution of the condiments over the chips in this thing. This might actually be a brilliant idea. I'll try that's it. I'll 100 percent try it next time. If there is uh, a technique I, to it. It's it's a slow. It's not hard. It's a very slow, little slow like side to side type of shuffle there. Yeah. Oh, you, gotta get, you, gotta get, you gotta get the chips turned over. Yeah. All like, right, Mitch. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. That that one's just for the video feed. We're not gonna describe that for the audio feed. <laughs> Uh, I, I wanna I, I, I'm I'm I wanna ask if uh, about this watermelon berry lemonade freeze because that's the other topical item that was the other uh, mm. uh, like couldn't thing in the new it. thing. You didn't get it. Couldn't get it. I couldn't. I I I got that one, and I will say you didn't miss much. Uh, Natalie thought it was oh, just wow. like kind of putrid. I think oh, it was Jesus. it was just generally sort of sweet, but it was just too sciencey. You know, you have something that's just like the the flavors are too like chemically. It was just it was just that. It was I, I didn't taste much berry. I tasted a good amount of citrus from the lemonade, but the watermelon tasted super artificial. Uh, oh, Natalie was like good. it was like it was like a Slurpee with too much ice in it. Like the the texture was not quite right either. I, I, I was just kind of overall bummed Jesus. out by this. And I do like the Baja Blast, so you know. I had I I uh, like I would have much rather had that instead. 
Um, I, I like the Baja Blast too, but I, I went with a Diet Pepsi. I try not to drink sugar, but I but I sure. but I, I, I wanted to try the the frozen drink. I I went I also got a cheesy gordita crunch. And why is it wasn't the best thing? It was like a so so cheesy gordita crunch. Mm-hmm. Like the like you know, like the shell had kind of was kind of soft. I it didn't even take me that long to get home. But the Quincy Taco Bell did a great job besides that. Um and then I gotta get to my bite of the night. Besides the the chili verde fries, the steak chili verde fries is maybe my bite of the night, but then and I got the cinnamon twists. And they were great. I haven't had cinnamon twists in a long time. And they, they it was a fresh batch or something. They they were fantastic. Yeah, I I got some cinnamon twists. I mine were not like, you know, they were a little bit staler tasting, but yeah, I I think those get the job done. I think that's the best sweet treat you have at at Taco Bell as far as something to munch on. I I usually don't get them cuz like if I'm going to have those calories of sugar, I'd rather just again just get like a a big soda or a Baja Blast or something, you sure. know. Like I, I, I don't really have much occasion to get the cinnamon twist, but I, I think they're very functional. I think they get the job done. Some nice crunch. Do you guys remember like the precursor to the cinnamon twist, where they would just fry the tortilla squares with cinnamon and sugar? Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, yes. they were like yeah. little sweet yeah. chips. Why did that ever go away? Like I, those were fun. Yeah, it's a great question. I don't oh. know why they should Ooh. bring them back. But Yo, cinnamon has- twist very solid. But man, I was I, every time I have one, that's all I think about is like, man, what happened to those triangles? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to ask you. You 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 grew up on 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 Disney ground. Mm-hmm. Are you a churros fan? Do you like churros? So when I was there, uh, the churro wasn't as uh, popular as it is. I think kind of like between like the late '90s, early 2000s. By then, my dad was you know uh, not not there. But uh, I will say this: going back to the park, and I've gone back several times over my lifetime. Uh, I have become a big churro fan, and and, and the the Disneyland churro is pretty special. To me. They're pretty great. I yeah. and that that's to me when I when I when I would have the cinnamon twist from Taco Bell, I was like, oh, they're like too crunchy and they're they're kind of dry. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, with the with the churros, you kind of get like more of like a how is that? Feels how, like more how do you of a, get it. You get, <laughs> <laughs> okay. With the with with the churros, you get more of like a it's like more of yeah. a baked item that you're. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the grip helps with the yeah the, the texture. <laughs> A nice soft, uh, a nice soft uh, churro. You know, it's it, and you, yeah. you get the warmth of it. Yeah, it's um, warm. It's warm and it's like hard on the outside. And then, like once you get it in your mouth, it's just very soft and gooey, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but this that's is, this is our I love them too, man. That's why yeah. I love them too. You know, <laughs> they're fantastic. And these are more. Li- these are more like. If it's almost like eating cereal or something to me. It's like they're very crunchy. Those and, feel uh, like the nephew of the churro that it doesn't really like to talk about. Mm, like, oh, sure. the cinnamon twist. Yeah, he's my yeah, he's, he's, yeah okay. he's doing okay. He's a good guy. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, doing he's his trying. thing. He says something yeah. like that. Oh, he's doing yeah. his thing. <laughs> He's like he's look he's he's been talking about opening a business. Like what's yeah. the business? Oh, I don't know really. I'm really excited it, for him, you know. Yeah, he's <laughs> Who's wearing a shirt that said like a uh, Golden Plate Club? I didn't know what that was about. <laughs> but he's going uh, to this you know, live he's... podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> said there's a VIP meet and greet. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Um, he's running. The, this, the, he's, yeah. running he's running a Discord for the Doughboys. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. I I don't know. I mean, this wasn't the best outing for Taco Bell. I, but I, I still have so much affection for this place. I, I I guess, Mitch, we should get to our fork scores. So how about this? Let's take a break, and we'll, wow. we'll be right back. We will render judgment on Taco Bell right after this. Wow. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mitch. Our next partner has truly made a positive impact on the most important people in my life. No, I'm not talking about Nick over here. Hey. I'm talking about Wally and Irma. Now you get it. Let's be real. Having a pet is expensive. From natural pet food to pet sitting, when you go on vacation, the cost can skyrocket quickly. But one thing that's definitely worth it for your fur baby is pet insurance. I love Wally and Irma, and I want to do everything I can to help them live a happy and full life for many, many years to come. This podcast is sponsored by Embrace Pet Insurance. It's time to upgrade your pet insurance game, whether you have a dog or a cat Embrace Pet Insurance offers customized plans for your pet's exact needs. 
Did you know vet care prices have increased by 33% from 2022 to 2023? That's insane. With Embrace Pet Insurance, you can visit any vet or emergency clinic. And if you have multiple pets to insure, you are eligible for a 10% multi-pet discount. Plus, they have a 24-7 helpline and optional wellness rewards program to ensure you prioritize preventative care for your pet so you hopefully never even need to use Embrace in the first place. I know some people think pet insurance is too expensive or not needed, but believe me, when facing a huge vet bill and choosing between your budget and your pet's health, you'll wish you had insurance. Embrace is actually very affordable. Pet insurance is great because it can reimburse you for your pet's unexpected accidents and illnesses. Vet costs are going up just like with human health care, so pet insurance provides peace of mind if your pet gets sick or injured. You can use any vet with Embrace. Don't wait for the unexpected to happen. Join the massive community of pet owners who trust Embrace Pet Insurance to protect their pet. Head to EmbracePetInsurance.com slash Doughboys and sign up for pet insurance today. Make sure you go to EmbracePetInsurance.com slash Doughboys or else they won't know I sent you. Welcome back to Doughboys. We are with Samoa Joe, and it's time for our fork scores. So, Joe, here's how this will work. We'll each go around. We'll give a closing argument, if you will, on this particular chain. Taco Bell, you can talk about this experience. You can talk about a lifetime of experiences, uh, and then end that by giving a score from zero to five forks. We begin with our guest. So your thoughts, your fork score. You know, Taco Bell strikes me as a chain restaurant in a bit of flux. It can't figure out what it wants to be. It's trying to break into the American market with the fries, yet at the same time, honor its traditional Mexican roots with several offerings that many of us don't really understand, but that's okay. I know this much about Taco Bell. Its baseline items are always good and always there. And like I said before, I look forward to a good old bean and cheese burrito. Just don't wrap it in another tortilla, deep fry that, and maybe throw some sour cream on top of it with some strawberry sauce. That's when it gets weird. So my final score for Taco Bell in all its greatness is a solid three forks because wow, the potential is there. The potential is there for greatness, but boys, we got to get it over the finish line. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Joe, I, that was probably the best review we've ever had. And at the yeah. same time, it broke my heart. Yeah. Because yeah. I, because I love Taco Yeah, Because the truth, the truth gets in your feelings, dog. All right. <laughs> I didn't come here. <laughs> to blow smoke up the asses, bro. I don't got that much in me, you know? Smokeless asses on this podcast, okay? Because I'm not blowing any on any. <laughs> Fuck. Man, I can't... Well, I can't beat that review. What a promo. I mean, that was... That was I mean, fuck. I, I, that, <laughs> Joe, when, that was like... it was so, That was so professional, it also kind of felt like we were being made fun of. So I, I appreciate it on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, when when we Nick and I were backstage with Evan Susser, that's right, at an AEW mm-hmm. event. When we walked by, was it that sort of thing of like, a like a guy who used to hang out with these kids, and then he went to high school first, and then like, the, like they came to high school and they're clearly nerds. Were you like, oh god, I gotta say hi to these guys, and I don't? Oh wanna. no, not at all. I was I was more like, wow, you let him backstage, okay? Um, and then I was like, I should go say hi. <laughs> I should go say what's tell up. You, that would, yeah, that would be they the cool tried thing to, do. to not. They tried to not let us backstage. It did yeah, happen multiple true. times. They're like, it was, it was. We were, we were, we had to, we had to jump through some, some hoops. Yeah, to get I can back only there. do this to security so much, and apparently none of them can see. So. <laughs> like I went like this. He's like, bring him over there, and I'm like, bring him over here. <laughs> we're sick of them crying near us. We're gonna let them back. <laughs> but you guys have fun um, though. I mean, I know it was the first wrestling event for 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 many of you. I think, and uh, we, had a, little time. we had a we had oh, a we had a blast. I've, I've, I've been a ton of ton of shows, but that was a fir- my first time of like kind of backstage at a big yeah, show. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. like kind of like an amazing experience. Yeah, I thought the great. spread was great. We talked about the food. The food was really good. Food you was guys great. Got a yeah. good setup. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. AEW yeah. they do good catering. You know, I will say this: uh, between AEW, WWE, the bigger company, they they do a good job with the catering in the back. You know, so wow, they keep okay. everybody fed well. I almost got ran over. There's by one JR. for the dirt sheets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Daddy needs some apple pie. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what happened. Yeah, move, son of a bitch. No need you. <laughs> Jr. gets ornery when his blood sugar get low. I'm just saying, you know, you don't get that man's <laughs> way. It's, it's Doughboys like. That's Doughboys esque. We 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 try to go. 
we tried to go we were like walking around backstage and like clearly it didn't belong you know what i mean like you could and we went a little too far to a spot where i think was just literally your guys like changing rooms or locker rooms <laughs> and it was like yeah, like it's Jericho. always awkward walking into that dude just a bunch of big dudes like <laughs> yeah. half naked like talking over stuff they kind of stare and look at you oh, yeah, yeah, it was... <laughs> mjf called us marks and jericho kind of stared us down uh it was it was it was great oh, yeah i'd say you guys probably uh, uh, ventured into unknown territory there yeah <laughs> we, 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 we right wags we nearly went too far oh yeah I think. no yeah. i was terrified but yeah. we had a blast I, we had a, we had a great time yeah um Look, Taco Bell is a five fork restaurant to me. This outing, if you want me to rank this outing and be honest with it, I think this outing was probably four and a quarter forks for me, but I had a good I had a good outing. Um I didn't have like a great five forker, which I know Taco Bell can do. Joe, I get what you're saying. I think some of the we got mad at the place because they pulled back some of the items that we loved, and then mm -hmm. now they have now when they highlight an item like you're saying, it could be a big swing and a huge miss. So that's, yeah. I think that is an issue now with, with the new Taco Bell, but I love it. And you know what? I got newfound respect for the cinnamon twist. I think you're right that they are the dopey cousin of churros, <laughs> but for, 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 for a snack, for a, a late night snack wags, I don't know. I think they're pretty decent and they fit the twisted metal month, so the twisted month though. So I like them and I'm going to go, I got to go. I always got to go five forks. I'm just going to go five forks. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm embarrassed. Hey, I'm going five. No forks. apologies, you know. I mean, if it's five I'm forks, it's five forks to you, you know. Look, if I mean, there's if any ass what, in the world, if that's what your five forks is, you know, if that's what the the, the fans of your podcast know, your five <laughs> forks is, you know, I know what my five forks is. I don't go throwing my forks just into any place willy nilly. You know, some of us a little bit more liberal with our fork, right? So it's okay, it's you know. You like to have your forks all out there for the world to see in their business. I like to keep my forks a little bit closer to my chest. So it's just a difference of opinion, man. It's no big deal. Wow. <laughs> I was going to say this. If there's any ass out there that needs smoke blown into it, I'll do it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm a smoke blower, Wags. I, 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 I love Taco Bell. I, and I, my experience was good. But I wonder what Nick will do because he, he had a bad outing. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't have a great outing, and boy, Joe really laid into you there for uh, your dis uh, the way the way you threw your forks around, and so yeah. uh, uh -huh. Ugh, just uh, everywhere. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so you know, thinking th taking those two factors into account, I have to go five forks. Uh, I do think this is a five <laughs> fork chain. <change. laughs> I do love Taco Bell. It's oh. just, it's it's nasty. I, these chain, the you know, it's 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 nasty in a different way than than Tommy's, and I say that with affection for both places. Oh yeah, but it is the same sort of thing. Like this is sometimes Taco Bell is sometimes exactly what you want, and I, even though these particular menu items weren't hitting, which I think is like kind of like to me, kind of your uh, one of your your key points, Joe, is just like some of their 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 their, their sporadic seasonal items, uh, their new items don't really hit, but I think their core menu is so solid mm -hmm. that there's always some something that I'm going to want from there. And uh, and I do really like their app, and I love how uh, friendly they are to people who eat less meat and want trashy food. And so for that reason, Five Forks. Uh, hey, that was our review of Taco I just, Bell. Yeah. I got a, a depressing image in my head of uh, like a Doughboys listener with their headphones on as like fireworks are going off outside, and they're just inside <laughs> in their home. Listen to this dog <laughs> shit. So excited. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, five forks. Yes. Five forks. <laughs> Honey, will you call will you call the cops on the neighbors? The fireworks are too loud. I can't hear the doughboy's fork score. All right. Player Diablo beta. <laughs> Shut up. Sure thing, baby. Like the hottest woman on earth. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the boys, the, the beta wives have the most attractive wives as well. Uh, the beta boys. Um, it's true. All of our listeners are married to. But that's to, only because like, the beta boys think every woman's beautiful. <laughs> that's true. Amen. Uh, Wags, well, uh, 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 out of the Golden Plate Club. Yeah, out of the Golden Plate Club, gone. out of the Platinum Plate Club. But you, you know, know what? You, I have a feeling. You did your work. We, it's fucking. We, we just fucking took it down. But I, I, I have a feeling, Mitch. We just might review Taco Bell a ninth time. I'm just guessing. Hey, it's time for sure a segment. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we will. Uh, for, uh, this is uh, this is from Amelia, and our associate producer Amelia. I, oh, wait, I, I wait. read the. F yeah. Before you get into this, because well, I should also warn Joe that this is going to be stupid as hell. 
um, whatever it is. Yeah, unlike the rest of the podcast so yeah. far. Okay. Just, yeah. This is yeah, gonna be. I, I, we knew this. I haven't detected any of that of that thus far. But okay, cool. I'm ready. I'm, let me let me bear down here. <laughs> I was gonna say that people are gonna get mad. I have to bring it up. It's dorky to bring it up, but people are gonna be mad that we didn't do Wendy's because of your famous line, mm. which I won't quote. But people mm. would want us to do oh, Wendy's. Oh, Wendy? We didn't. That's exactly what people would. That's, that's what. So get be prepared for one thousand tweets at you about us not. Oh, doing Oh, why Wendy's. we didn't do Wendy's? I know, I know. Yeah, and I think it was the right choice because we knew because because we'll tell them right because we knew it would upset them and we don't care about their feelings right. Remember how we talked about that before we started the podcast? <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. We should do that the Wendy's. I'm like, oh, I don't know, and you're like, no, nah, don't do Wendy's. Screw those people. Ah, my <laughs> listeners suck. I remember you said that. So that we're is, gonna get you know them. What? <laughs> I, I will go on record as saying our listeners do suck shit. Um, <laughs> Joe, they start buying one more last merch. Thing. We like hearing that. <laughs> Joe, he I need to it, hear your. He <laughs> <laughs> I need your four score for Tommy's before we go on. What if Taco Bell's Ooh, a question. three to you? What is Tommy's in in forks? What's your Tommy's? Oh, it, fork it, score? It's it's a four fork. Could not be a five simply because it's not. It, there's nothing. Five anything about Tommy's burgers. I mean, <laughs> True. you know, you bear it, it's an experience you barely survive. It's not one that you uh you know <laughs> go away from unscathed. You know, it's 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 a battle. It's it's something you gotta mentally prepare for. And you know, nobody nobody puts five forks on that. You know, you put four and you put that last fork in between your teeth and you go down there, <laughs> grin and bear it and get that damn chili cheeseburger down your gullet. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Good score, great score. I think yeah, I'm with score. you. I think Tommy's yeah, fair a score. forker. Uh, here, here's a All segment, right. Mitch. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read this, and and I'll say, uh, I'll just read this, and we'll get into it. This is from our associate okay. producer Amelia Marino. All right. This, these, this is her words. I'm prefacing this by saying, Mitch asked me to come up with something insane. Let me know if this segment doesn't make sense. So I read this, and then I stopped reading. I said to come up with something called twisted. Something twisted. The direction she took was something <laughs> insane. So we will we'll take it from there. I read this and I was like, I'm not going to read the rest till we get on the air. So I will also be surprised along with you. Here we go. Mitchell versus the machines. Mitch and Joe are at an ice cream parlor where the machines can mix and match unusual flavors to create a twist. Each machine has its own theme and both Mitch and Joe must come up with two flavor combinations to create the best twist. For instance, for the snack machine, the two twists Mitch might come up with are Cool Ranch Doritos and Diet Coke. Joe might say M&Ms and an apple. It is then up to the machine, Weiger, okay, to determine which twist is more appealing. <laughs> if the machine accepts a twist, that person gets M. Night Shyamalan, which is a good thing. If the machine rejects a twist, the they, they in Sixth Sense fashion are dead the whole time. The person who gets okay. M. Night Shyamalan the most is the most twisted, a.k.a. the winner. So one of you is going to get M. Nighted, and one of you is going to get dead the whole time. I guess it's up to me to decide. Okay. Uh, I'm confused. I, I got a we'll question for you. It. Yeah, is your producer <laughs> chat GPT? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I listen carefully. I listen carefully to you say every word off that paper, and I still don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> My thought is that Amelia is mad at us. We made her mad at us somehow. <laughs> to be mm. fair, I just looked up the the conversation when we started talking about this, and the the direct request was, "Can you come up with some insane bullshit for tomorrow?" So that's pretty <laughs> right. insane bullshit. Right. God, it is. Yeah, it's true. Right. She yeah. took the note. My fault. I, yeah, my she fault. went crazy when she wrote that. I can tell that much. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> I kind of love. I I I, I kind of get it. But Wags, are you going to ask us? Is it in categories or no? Yeah, I so so she gave me a list of categories for machines. Okay. So and then I okay. guess from that there are two you say would say two things that might be in that machine. Got and it. I am going to say who has the better combo. Okay. Uh, all right. I so like the it. All right. So let let's start things simple with fruit machine. There's a machine that dispenses fruit. What is your twist from a fruit machine? Now, do Too both long, things should... have to be a fruit? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I think in that's my how head, it works. I was picturing it like you know those soft serve or yeah soft serve ice cream machines where you have like chocolate on one side and vanilla on the other, and you can do one or the other, or you can twist them. I was picturing yes, it like that yeah. kind of machine. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, for fruit, I think I got it, Wags. Okay. Okay, I think I got one too. For fruit, I'm gonna mix up apples, pineapples, and 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 uh and then some other regular apple. You know what I'm saying? Pineapple and regular apple and a regular apple. Pineapple and apple. Yeah. Okay. It's not that bad. All right, that's Mitch's fruit machine. No, I didn't say any, I didn't. I'm not rendering any judgment at all. What are you Tell doing? Are you writing something down? Yeah, I got to write these down because I'm the machine. I have to to decide who gets M Night Shyamalan. Were you okay, even fucking right. listening? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I'm gonna give this shot. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with pineapple too, but I'm gonna mix it with chili pepper. Wow. Fuck. Fuck. Uh, that this one's easy for me because you know I'm a bit of a heat seeker and I do love that combination. Uh, the 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 spiciness brings out the sweetness. Uh, Joe gets M Night Shyamalan, which is a good thing. So you have one point. Yes, I've been dead the whole time. You're yeah, you've been dead, dead the whole time. You're a ghost. <laughs> Nobody pays attention to you. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I right. go with pineapple and apple? All right, go on. Next up. Live event snack machine. Okay. Live event snack machine. So this means live like, event snack machine. What the fuck does she mean? That's a great question, and I have no <laughs> other context. Well, uh, I, I, I do quite a bit of live events, so I think we're talking about like stadium food, arena food. Oh, sure, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. All right. <gasps> okay. All right. Oh, I got. Oh, fuck. But that's. I got one. You got one. Okay. I got one. Uh, I'm going to go, I'll go first this time, you know, we'll switch it up. I was kind of scouting you last time, totally sniped your thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you don't need to scout me, you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just pick the same thing you picked, but then a better second ingredient. That's my whole strategy. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, uh, ooh, let's go a uh, a soft pretzel and a caramel apple. Wow. Ooh. That's fucking good. Okay, I got one. I do got one. I just changed it in my head. Okay. But not to anything. What I was going to say was pretzel and a hot dog, and then I'm like, those exist. Yeah. Basically. Sure. But that's I'm going to go food. with, that's mall food. And this kind of exists too, but I'm going to go with a beer wags and a frozen lemonade, like a frozen ice lemonade. Ooh, you son of a bee. That's pretty good, right? That is. It's that's a lot of fun. This is a tough one. Um, I'm gonna give He's it to Mitch. To, I'm gonna give it to Mitch just, for for creativity's sake, and I also think that's like very refreshing, which I think is huge at a lot, depending on the live event. But yeah, like a like a brew dog and something frozen that 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 can just hit you just right. I thought he was gonna be afraid to give any to me, Joe. So this is huge that I won one. <laughs> I'm I'm the machine. I feel nothing. Yeah, I'm just here point. to be a, a, a neutral <laughs> arbiter. Uh, by the way, Mitch, it, just hypothetically, if you'd if you'd said churro, how what would you how would you have eaten that? Probably a little like. <laughs> a little oh, got, it, like got it, got yeah. it, got it. Okay. Yeah. I hear if you do that, the cinnamon sugar it <laughs> it spills into your mouth. Doesn't get on your shirt. You got to go like a. Down oh, one. great! Yeah. Right, right, right. It's a better angle. <laughs> yeah. That's a, the, the the Mitch acting that out. That's that's our the Doughboys online exclusive. That's like our <laughs> our version of the app. All right, next up, uh, this is a however you interpret this fast food logos machine. I, fast I like this. food logos. Hmm. I like lots it. of iconic fast food logos out Should there. Should I go Which first? Who will you pick? Yeah, go yeah, ahead, yeah. Mitch. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Fast food logo. Fast food logo. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, Mitch has it. Oh, it has to be. It has to be a logo. Okay, I was thinking of like the characters. Can it be the characters or it has to be the logo? I mean, it says logos. I guess you could try to get a character. I, I would think if the character is part of a logo, to me that's allowable. But if you're just gonna say like mm. grimace, it's like grimace isn't in the McDonald's signage anywhere. But like the Colonel is part of the KFC logo. <sighs> Or the Jolly Bee. I think the Jolly Bee is up for grabs. Okay, I'm gonna go Wendy's. Wow. 
and the Jolly Bee. I'm going to make a hot bee. <laughs> wow. A hot red-headed bee. <laughs> a hot red-headed bee. <laughs> All right, all right. I'm trying to, okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to appeal to the Doughboys listeners who I think would right, like. Okay, I, got, I think I got yeah. it. Uh, we're gonna go the South's favorite chicken sandwich restaurant. We're gonna take that logo. We're gonna bathe it in flames because you're going to Chick Fil A's. Wow, that's good. <laughs> I love that. That's badass. Uh, and you know what? I think that's in the spirit of being twisted. So I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give that one to Joe. Oh. I think Joe gets M knighted. <laughs> That, uh, Mitch, I had a dream last night that I, that there was a thing called the Wendy's movie, and that it was like a like it was like a very dark, gritty crime like drama, but it was like the yeah. Please I, tell I, me I, it was Dave Thomas like being like uh, Liam Neeson finding Wendy and some more <laughs> <and> rescuing her. <laughs> I mean, that's a movie. I have a very special set of skills. <laughs> I got to get my job at Funny or Die back. That's uh, that would that would absolutely work. Uh, yeah. I I think that that yeah that's a it, it, I I don't remember the details. I just remember being like gritty, and then it was called, and then I was like, what movie is this? And then like I think maybe my sister in law was like, that's the Wendy's movie. And I was like, mm, okay, I guess that exists. <laughs> but then like in the how dream, she said it to you so matter of factly and like yeah. disgusted, you didn't understand. Yeah, it's yeah. the <laughs> Wendy's movie, jerk face. <laughs> Yeah, Moron. He doesn't, he doesn't know asshole. the Wendy's movie. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saying, this is. I think this is the first time I've ever sincerely said this. Yeah. But I think that we should maybe stop doing this podcast. Okay. Uh, this. Can, we can have that be a discussion. If you're dreaming about the Wendy's movie, <laughs> it just seems like it's. It seems like it. <laughs> It's come to an end, right? You think I wouldn't be dreaming about that if we weren't doing this podcast? <laughs> I feel like that's just like just monetizing what's going on in my subconscious anyway. It just <laughs> um, all right. Next up. Oh, here we go. Pro wrestler machine. Ooh. Oh shit. We're we're in Frankenstein territory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. I got I'll go first. I'm gonna mix Bandito. Do you know Bandito? You know, you know Bandito. Yeah, yeah, I know Bandito. Wow, a high Bandito. flying, a high flying man with the toughest son of a bitch there is, Samoa Joe. Oh wow! Ooh, ooh, that's unstoppable. Tough. That's that's pretty good. That's a force. It's a fucking machine. I should have missed. I should have. You know what? Can I, can I take it back? Yeah. Can I joke? Because I wanted to, I wanted to include you in mine, but I now thought of something, and I want to, and I and I got to do it. Yeah. Okay, I want to mix Goldberg and Gilberg. Okay, <laughs> so you're attracting Bandito and Samoa Joe and Goldberg and Gilberg. Because well, well, I think you probably would have won. I think, with I think you just become Samoa Joe, but I know. But I think I just I think that just becomes Berg. I guess it just cancels out to Berg. Yeah, it's just like a guy. Or Gold Gill, if you just the, the birds cancel Gil. out. Either Joe, one. do you like my second version better? I, I think I think your second version, you know, you know, it's, <laughs> it sounds like they just cancel each other out. It's just, you just end up with a dude. It's like an algebraic an equation, guy. yeah. Uh, let me see here. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go Macho Man Randy Savage. Wow. And uh, Hawaii's favorite breakfast meat, Spam, and do Macho Spam, Randy's. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give that to Joe. Well, uh, macho Spam, Randy Hamage. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Joe's having more fun with it than I am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're stressing out. That's the thing. You got to get a relax. I'm fucking You're nervous. swinging for the fences, kid. Eh, take, yeah. take the infield double. It's all right. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, we'll do a couple more. Next one, body parts machine. Ooh. What the body fuck? Body parts. This Amelia. is also very Frankenstein. Yeah, mm. it's getting creepy. Uh, I'm going to go an elbow mixed with an asshole so people can know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> That's an L hole <laughs> or an aspo. Take your an pick. Aspo. I like an aspo. Great. All right, Mitchie. <laughs> Beat Aspo. I got it. No, that Fox. was a command. Beat Aspo, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Hogs. You're going to mix. I'm going to mix hogs. Got it. With nips. <laughs> so basically just like two, the two, two things you can't like show on TV, basically. <laughs> So on um, your nips, you'd have little hogs. Each nip yeah, would have I'm, a little I'm, hog. I'm, I'm, I'm picturing it, and it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I hated hearing it. I'm going to give this one to Joe as well. I would have liked to have given it to you be, so we could have, like, a tie going into the finale, but that's upsetting. Nobody likes a penis, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sadly, uh, all right. I got a fucking penis. <laughs> You need that Enchirito in cam. Town, boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Last one. Twists machine. And the parenthetical is however they interpret this. Twists <laughs> machine. Twists machine? Now I would say, like, look, I'm I'm just saying, again, I'm the I'm the machine. I'm not I'm I'm not supposed to weigh in here, but I think you could take something that's like a literal twist if you wanted. Like a thing that's actually like actually I think that's one way to go. I think you'd take something that's a metaphorical twist. I think everything is up for grabs. Got it. Twists okay. machine. Hmm. I think I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And it's not good, but I but I but I but I'm going to I'm going to go with this, Wags. I'm going to go with it's just the two famous Wow, it's it's not good, you're saying, Mitch? Hold on, I just want to be prepared for this. <laughs> So I'm just looking at your other answers. I'm like, wait, so this one's Hogs not good? and Nips okay. was good. You know Hogs <laughs> and Nips was pretty good. <laughs> you know that wasn't bad. No, that was good. I think I'm going to go McFlurry machine, Wags. Wow. And a Blizzard machine. I'm fucking mixing up both of them. That's the most twisted fucking thing you can get. Yeah, you're blending every every mix in you're and every flavor everything. of ice cream there. That's pretty good. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I'm gonna go. Um, oh, just, just about to destroy me. <laughs> tough one. Uh, I'm gonna go with twisted tea. Ooh. With. Mm, oh, with twisted sour patch kids. Oh, I like that. Wow. Those two color sour patch kids. That sounds like something I would want to drink so bad. We should we should have some after this. That sounds I would that sounds good actually. That. that sounds we fun. We should stuff a bunch of jo- stuff a bunch of, of sour patch kids into into a twisted, a twisted tea. tea. Yeah, and then just Twi- keep twisted tea is weirdly huge in New England. I don't know. I, I, has it is it big in is it big down in Florida, Joe? Emma's nodding. In, uh, alcohol it, in general is, is pretty popular down here. I don't know if y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no. It's, a, it's not really a preference thing. It's more just like. You know, has it fermented? All right, bring it on down. You know, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, That's, I guess it is. <laughs> that, a twisted tea. Someone was mixing a twisted tea in in like a a fro like a lemonade drink, like a hard lemonade online, and making like oh. an Arnold Arnold Palmer. Oh, a twisted kind Arnold of Palmer. Thing. Come on, that's right. Yeah, up my alley. that's yeah, the best. That sounds great. See, that's like PGA Live Golf coming together. That's what that drink is. There you go. <laughs> finally, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. man. <laughs> Can't be I insane that PGA was just like we bought them after all that <laughs> yeah after all that all that shit it's crazy <laughs> um Emma is it but because in California twisted tea is not huge wags right like I, I don't know I think it's I, exist, I think you can though, find right? it but I don't think of it as like it's it's like a big thing that people drink you know yeah. but New also it's summertime huge Emma knows yeah. it yeah gigantic. Absolutely. Uh, I th- these these are both good. I'm gonna give this one to Mitch just because that, that sounds like a great su- uh, sweet treat on a summer day, uh, which wow. makes the final score uh, Joe four, Mitch two, uh, and in a twist, <laughs> Emma wins. Congratulations, Yay! to Emma Erdberg, our winner. <laughs> yeah, what a twist! I'm gonna go get a twisted tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 4 p.m. Um, all right. <laughs> Just like a restaurant about your feedback, let's open up the feedback. Today's email is from Curtis. Curtis writes, Hi to everyone at Doughboys Media and the Hunks at HeadGum. This is Curtis in Vancouver wondering how you handle ordering menu items with embarrassing names. Denny's is the classic example. Even if I really want it, I just can't look another human being in the eye and say, Moon over my hammy. What are your strategies? Do you try to work around it? I'll have the moon. Point at the menu and say this one. 
or in true Doughboys listener fashion, do you just get your partner to order it for you? Um, this is a you know what this also makes me think of an IHOP menu item, which was the Rudy Tootie Fresh, Fresh and Fruity. Fresh and Fruity, yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that was one I liked actually, and I would just like straight up order it. But I remember, but I was also like a kid, so I was kind of like excited to say it. So if I got one now and nowadays, I think I'd still be okay saying it. You know, I, I don't think I'd be too self conscious. But 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 I don't know. Like I I do get like a little bit nervous when I'm ordering menu like in general because I'm like worried I'm gonna fuck something up and say the wrong thing. You know what I mean? It was funny um, to go ahead, go ahead, Joe. What were you gonna say? No, no, Joe. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say, you know, guys. Let's look at the macro here. You know, we're in a Denny's. Like, are we really worried about the opinions of people in a Denny's? You know, are we? Point. Yeah. Are we? Are we? Are, am I sitting around looking at the guy at the coffee counter over there going, "Man, I hope he doesn't think I'm weird." Like, the guy sitting at <laughs> the coffee counter in a Denny's in the middle of the day. You think he's having a weird day already? Let's be honest here. I mean, it's. I think this it's is Weiger. A, this is yeah. This is a problem <laughs> that does not need an answer. All this. Right. All this needs is. Brother, order your moons over my hammy. That's not even that ridiculous of a of a named meal. And you're in Denny's, dude. Nobody, nobody there who's judging you has yeah. any 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 ability to affect your life. Trust me, man. Like, <laughs> I think you're right, Joe. Great you're 100 percent right. I. That being said, I do get self conscious. <laughs> I, I just getting a large. I ordered a large Pepsi today, and I was like, a large Diet Pepsi. And even that, where I was just saying a large, and then that's what came back to me, super size, super mm. size and biggie size to me, they're gone now and I loved them and I wish they were back. Mm -hmm. But saying super size was the thing that kind of made me embarrassed, I guess, was to be like, I want like the biggest thing that there is. I want the super sized version of it. Um, I weirdly didn't where, have an issue with super size, but I did have it with Biggie size, and I think because Biggie yeah. was like a little bit more awkward to say, but yeah. super yeah, size like a was kid. like, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And just saying, you know, asking for Biggie anything just sounds kind of weird. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm like a Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's embarrassing for me is when I go to Wendy's and I'm like, I'll have like a number six with a baba, and I'll, I'll ask for like a baba, you know, like a yeah. like a right like a bottle. Yeah. Do you have a changing station bike. that fits a grown man? <laughs> uh, the the you know you know one thing I actually get self conscious about is like if I'm like an Italian restaurant or something and there's like like just it's like oh, in Italian yeah. like some uh, certain sauces or certain like wines and stuff that's things I and, and my move is I'll just be like and I'll just point to it and be like how do you pronounce this or yeah you know, I like I would just plead ignorance because I don't like I, I like I'm fine like looking dumb or whatever um and I'll you know just what let I do. them say it. Yeah. Say, what the fuck? How the fuck do you say this, you Italian freaks? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Johnny where the Goomba, fuck this come is. over here and explain this to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Luigi, uh, yeah. I, don't under, I don't know what ensalada means. Huh? What's the deal with this? <laughs> I, I'm curious. Emma was a Emma attended bar for for many years. Emma, I'm curious as a, from the server's perspective, was there ever like were you ever put off by how someone ordered something, or were there ever certain drinks that someone would order and the way they said it or them them hearing it would make it a little cringe? Not really. Most of the time, I we I used to work at a charcuterie restaurant, and a lot of people can't say prosciutto. I got a lot of like oh, sure. prosciutto and like a lot of just completely different words. And honestly, pointing at the <laughs> menu asses. and being like, "How do you say this?" Why is like you said is probably the best way to do it because partially you don't want them to like think you're talking about something else and bring you the wrong food or the wrong right. wine or whatever it is. Um, we used to have a beer called the Raging Bitch on draft for a while, and people had a hard time with that one. Like we were like. I want the the raging, and then they just like trail off, and you're like the raging bitch. <laughs> but That's... I don't think the, the server's not going to remember it t two yeah. seconds later. So don't worry about it. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to say that. <laughs> I was with yeah, Mookie tough. once, Mitch, our buddy, our buddy Mookie. I was with Mookie and our, yeah. our friend Eva Anderson, and we got drinks. Um, they were both on on my side of town. We got drinks once, and there's a bar. There's a Mama's Little Yellow Pills, and I accidentally said Mama. Can I get the little yellow piss? <laughs> and I thought that like no one heard me, and I just like I was like fine. And then Mookie immediately was like, "Little yellow piss, all loud." And I was like, oh, "Fuck." 
so embarrassing. I'm just like, shocked that you were out. You met them out at a bar. Well, and they came. They came to my side to town, and we went for happy hour. So that the 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 planets aligned. It wasn't too Mookie late. Maybe it wasn't just too mentioned far. this to me recently. Did you leave shortly after that? Were you not there long? Yeah, I mean, I got out of there. Yeah, <laughs> I think that, you told me the story. Over. I think he told me this story that he went to your side of town and got a drink, and you left like quickly. <laughs> we hung out for a bit. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think, I think it's more on like, well, if your place is going to name it, like Joe said, you shouldn't be embarrassed for saying it in front of anybody. It doesn't matter, right? Well, and, and here's kind of like reinforces my point. I've sat in millions of Waffle Houses and watched people uh, with no problem whatsoever scream "smothered," "chunked," "covered," and and, and chop oh, yeah. their hash browns with no problem. So it's like, yeah, just order it, man. <laughs> just order it. That's a good get point. over it. But also, like. The raging bitch would be hard for me to. That's that's like one. Don't don't name your stuff that. I guess local businesses. That's that's always sucks. Yeah, you just yeah, use harsh harsh letters in that. You know. Oh, I need the raging B. Mm. There you go. That's the way to <laughs> do it. Go. There you go. That's the way to do it. If you have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you know what? You, you know what I just thought always... of, Vice? What's that? Can I get two tickets to the podcast show tonight? Oh yeah, Marin Live. Sure. I mean, like it's sold out, but you can get on standby. No, the, oh, no, no the, the, boys, the other one, the, the shittier the... one in the smaller venue. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh Doughboys. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't say it too loud. <laughs> uh, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail com or leave us a voicemail at eight three zero go to. That's eight three zero four six three six eight four four. Our producer is Emma Erdbrink. Our associate producer is Amelia Marino. And Doughboys Media is available from Kinship Goods. Doughboys dot Kinship Goods dot com. You can also get the Doughboys Double or Weekly bonus episode by joining the Golden or Platinum Plate Club at patreon.com slash doughboys. But most of all, Joe, thank you so much for making time for us. Is there anything else you want to plug, Joe? Uh, obviously, AEW Collision coming to Saturday nights on TNT. We're, uh, we're oh, yeah. watching that pretty soon here. And, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned to AEW Rampage and uh, look out for Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. And, yeah, I'm sure there's tons of other things, but I don't know what NDAs I'm under and which ones I'm not, so I can't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna guess. <laughs> well, there'll never be a Doughboys NDA because no one gives a shit about us. But thank you for being here. Of we course. loved having you. And that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoonman, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. Want to dress like the Doughboys? Of course you don't. But you will want to wear our all-new Doughboys merch. Check out our completely revamped merch line in partnership with Kinship Goods. We've got high-quality shirts, hats, aprons, totes, and much more to come. Wow! Only at doughboys.kinshipgoods.com. That's K-I-N-S-H-I-P goods.com. Sources for the intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast.